Now, I told you this week's show is a power show, and it's got a lot to do with our feature car this week, the beast that is the VW Amarok V6. Twenty twenty will forever be etched into our minds and into the history books as the year that the world as we know it changed forever. For Bucky and pickup owners, their world changed back in 2010 when VW introduced the Amarok. Yes, I know that's a pretty bold statement to make, but let's be honest, the industry was turned on its head by the Amarok because it came out with car-like ride quality and comfort. It introduced safety features like off-road ABS and vehicle stability control. And of course, there were those small capacity turbo engines. Now, in celebration of the Amarok being available for 10 years, Volkswagen South Africa introduced this, the Beast, the most powerful double cab bucky you can buy. Crazy, I know. Launch control in a bucky. It is nuts. I mean, think about it. Your sheep, the hay bales, your stock, it's all going to go flying out the back. Well, actually, no, come to think of it, that's probably not going to happen because the Amarok is no longer a traditional workhorse, is it? It's totally geared up for lifestyle and, would you believe it, performance. The interesting thing, this review, you're going to be more interested in, in information like the fact that it gallops to 107.6 seconds and that it tops out to 207 kilometers an hour than the fact that the Amarok has the largest and the widest load area in the segment. The fact that you can also fit a pallet between the two wheels. No other bucky that is currently sold in the market can do that. Things really have changed. Crazy, crazy world we live in. So Volkswagen have streamlined things. There are only two engines available in the double cab segment. You've got the entry level two liter four cylinder bi-turbo diesel engine, or of course this, the all new 190 kilowatt three liter V6 diesel. It does replace the previous 165 kilowatt engine, but as you can see visually, yeah, not much has changed. It is so funny not to wax lyrical about styling, but come on, you guys have had 10 years to have a good look at the Amarok. You know what is impressive though for me is that it's remained relatively unchanged in that time. It tells you just what a stellar job the design team did with this, their very first pickup. The only thing that you see here that is not standard on the Highline Amarok would be these optional 19 inch Milford alloys. M Milford? Milf Milford. Ford. <laughs> it's pretty interesting, eh? Now apparently the Amarok has the largest cabin in the segment, but you'll never say that when you get into the back. This is my driving uh, position right here and it leaves me with very little leg room. I also find that you sit super, super vertically, so not going to be comfortable on a long run. Um, the seats themselves aren't bad and, and the headroom is pretty good as well, but it's amazing. You know, you're sitting in the back of a car that costs this much money and no air vents, so no climate control for your comfort in the back and there's one 12 volt charger only. So it would seem they've saved all the roominess for the passengers up front because I've got no complaints from a space and comfort perspective. And what I do love is the driving position is really good as well. Now, it's something I've always said with VW. I love their interiors because it's clean and uncluttered. 
But let's be honest, this is also where the Amarok is now really starting to show its age when you look at its competitors. The dash is a very traditional old school analog layout. If you look from a connectivity perspective as well, yeah, it's awesome that we can pair our smartphones. They've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but up front there's only one USB. The rest is 12 volt chargers. And then of course this touchscreen. When you look at it now, it starts feeling very 2010, dwarfed compared to the competitors. But at the end of the day, these are all gonna be the big significant changes you are gonna see when the new Amarok comes out in 2022. Obviously the big talking point here is the engine and it really is brilliant. The previous V6 was, this is even better. The kilowatts are up by 25, the newton meters are up by 30 to uh, 580 newton meters. And what is going to come in handy when you're on the open road and you're wanting to do some overtaking is that there is a 10 second overboost which pushes the kilowatts up to 200. The 8-speed transmission I've always really loved and the pairing with this more powerful engine is just brilliant. Uh, changes are seamless, they're almost intuitive and I think that really is the strength of the Amarok along with the fact that I still think this is the best driving bucky on the market. We felt that in 2010 when it first came out it set a new benchmark for how buckies should behave on-road and off-road and it's unchanged now and that is whether you are buying the two liter the baby in the class or you're in the big beast that we're in what is important for me as well is that uh, we do have disc brakes all around because you know it's one thing getting two tons up to speed it's a totally different story trying to get it to stop Wow, what a machine, what an engine. You literally do forget that you are flying on by in a bucky. It's actually quite nuts. But I do really, really struggle with the price. You have two V6 options. The Highline at 922,000 Rand includes the heavy duty leaf springs, while the Extreme with the Napa leather, the 20 inch alloys, and the Discover Pro media system is going to set you back, well, let's just call it a million bucks. As it is, I really do struggle getting my head around the pricing of standard double cabs, especially when you consider, honestly, it's a space at the back that you're only occasionally using. Now you're dropping a bar. Wow, seems nuts, eh? But I guess he has some positive spin. The fact that Ford will now be producing uh, the new Amarok in 2022 might mean that this becomes a future classic, especially if the rumors are true that this brilliant engine is not going to be carried across, but that Ford in fact will be producing their own V6. But let's talk about the Ford VW partnership. I mean, it makes complete sense for me from a business perspective, but I do have one genuine concern, and that is around the build quality. But VW have assured us that whatever rolls off the production line uh, in 2022 is going to be according to their quality standards. So I guess all we can do is wait and see. But if you can afford, afford it, that's quite funny. Uh, this is impossible to beat.